We've been conditioned to believe the path to wealth requires hustle and sweat. We think to reach our goals, we need to work long hours, produce more, and occasionally offer Mr. Magic Lamp a sacrifice. But what if I told you in recent decades, the data shows that the harder you work, the poorer you actually become. The mantra of hard work equals wealth has been the foundation of the US economy for centuries. Some of the earliest immigrants that came to the US were Puritans who believed that hard work made God happy. Since then, hard work has been ingrained into the very fabric of American culture. Wake up, check work emails. Dinner, work emails. Before bed, work emails. Hey, sorry, can't hang out. A new work project just popped up. When it comes to measuring the wealth of an economy, economists use GDP per capita. Basically, how much money people make on average working in that country. The higher the GDP, the wealthier the country is. Naturally, you think if you compare GDP per capita with the number of hours people work, you think working more hours leads to more money. In mathematics, they call this proportionality. It's the idea that input X leads to output Y, and inputting more of X would lead to more of Y. In a grocery store, if you're buying apples, the cost Y is proportional to the weight X of the apples you purchase. If each pound of apple costs $2, then buying two pounds of apples will result in $4. This is true for most things. The more reps you put in, the nicer your calves will be. The more time you spend watching Peaky Blinders, the better your Brummie accent. But when it comes to economic wealth, reality paints a different story. Take two countries that are technologically similar, like Germany and the US. On average, Americans and Germans have similar levels of wealth per capita, around $50,000 per person. The problem is, Americans work 450 hours, or 11 weeks more each year than Germans do. And it's not just Germany, there's Norway, Switzerland, Luxembourg, and Ireland too. People in these countries on average make more money and work significantly fewer hours. So why doesn't working harder and longer hours lead to more money? Since the industrial revolution, people believe technology would change everything. Productivity would go up and naturally, so will our wealth. In 1932, Bertrand Russell said he believed we're approaching a time when we'll work as little as four hours a day and everyone will be able to do what they love. Watch paint dry, read a blank book, and peel grapes. After decades of technological advancements, Americans are now more productive and work harder than any other time in history. In a perfect market, this rise in productivity would lead to a rise in labor value and wages. And for a period of time, this was true until we got here. In the 1980s, a gap started to form. Productivity continued to increase with technological advances, fax machines, floppy disk, pagers, but growth in wage and compensation started to slow down. When it comes to figuring out why this happened, we need to explore an economic concept called marginal return. Basically, marginal return is how much extra benefit you can get from doing a little more of something. Like if I studied Excel formulas for one more hour, how many new formulas can I remember? Naturally, over time, the extra benefit you get from putting in that extra effort gets smaller and smaller. Consider this study that says increasing work hours from 40 to 60 hours a week did not produce an output of 50% more, which you'd imagine would happen since you're working 50% more hours. Instead, the actual output from those extra hours was only between 25 to 30%. If you're a graphic designer, in the mornings you might be super productive and can whiz through three beautiful designs an hour. However, as the day goes on, you get more tired, exhausted, and less creative. In the evenings, you're only able to make one design an hour that looks like this. Marginal returns help us determine if putting time and effort into something is worth it, or if we're better off doing something else. When it comes to a company in business, they use a variation of this called marginal revenue product to determine whether it's profitable to hire an additional worker. Basically, if an additional worker adds to the company's overall earnings, the company will hire that worker. If John's hourly wage is $15, but he can produce something in an hour that can be sold at $20, the company will hire him and profit at the $5 difference. On the other hand, if John can only produce something in an hour that can be sold at $7, then the company won't hire him to avoid losing money. During the Industrial Revolution, advances in coal power, technical innovations, and mechanized production made it easy to calculate the value of each additional worker. One more worker could mean 30 more pairs of shoes can be made, 20 more newspapers printed, or one more magic lamp mined. Today, the business landscape is different. The once booming manufacturing industry is being replaced by tech service industries. Healthcare, finance, education. Instead of workers standing on factory floors, product managers, operation analysts, and researchers now now sit in front of computer screens. These new roles make it much harder to calculate their direct value to the company's revenue. How much revenue did that seventh meeting directly contribute to? How much money did including that extra legal clause produce? The
The type of output also changed. In the 1800s, a factory might have produced 500 boxes of underwear at the end of the day. But today, a startup is building an app or software that's expected to launch two years in the future, but will not be profitable until year five. Companies know all about these changes. Employers know that they now need to wait much longer to sell the product before they can recruit revenue. They know that their workers can't afford to wait that long to get paid, so employers will pay them less. In economics, they call this discounted marginal revenue product. Basically, money expected in the future is worth less than money earned today because of inflation and the time value of money. If a cheeseburger cost $1 last year and the inflation rate is 10%, then this year that same cheeseburger could cost $1.10. As a result, employers apply a discount to the wage that they're willing to pay workers today, and the employers receive a premium for waiting for that eventual sale. But remember, worker productivity has drastically increased over time, meaning a company's revenue has also drastically increased. So where is all this new and extra revenue going to? Here's a hint. In the 1970s, a CEO earned 20 times more than their typical worker. Today, a CEO makes 296 times more. We spend so much time focusing on work and being productive. Immediately replying to emails, crossing out tasks, scheduling our calendars. Once we get into a work groove and catch some momentum, all we want to do is ride that wave as long as possible. So we work harder, longer hours, fit in as much as we can into our days, and continue to work into the late evenings. The problem is, if left unchecked, we will continue to work beyond the point of what's healthy for us. The more you work, the more stressed you feel. The more your mind races, the more you have trouble sleeping, and the the more you're unable to plenish your energy levels. Just like a battery that loses its full charge, over time you will only reach 80 or 75% of your energy potential. The more you grind yourself down, the lower that threshold becomes. Over time, you'll burn out, lay on the floor, and think, I'll just take a week vacation to recover. When you return, you'll just start that cycle all over again. But imagine what you could achieve if instead of working those extra inefficient hours at your job, you just did something else like live life or start a side hustle. Chances are either of these would financially reward you much more than staying late at the office for the 37th day in a row. The problem with thinking that you'll make more money by constantly working late for your boss is that you're trading your limited resource of time for money. The reality is, it is very challenging to become wealthy doing this exchange, and here's why. First, if you're being paid $15 an hour, the most you can ever earn in a day is $360, assuming you don't sleep or eat. Second, there's a limit to how much someone will pay for your skills. If you're a specialized brain surgeon, sure, you might be able to make $3,000 per hour, but eventually you will hit a ceiling because the market won't pay a higher rate. Just trading time for money makes few people wealthy, which is why 61% of American adults live paycheck to paycheck, despite being the most overworked, technologically advanced nation in the world. The secret to building wealth is understanding this. If you go out into the desert in the middle of the scorching sun and you bring a shovel and you start randomly digging holes for 12 hours straight, have you worked hard? Absolutely, zero doubt about it. But are you any wealthier? People don't pay you for your hard work. They pay you to solve a problem. The more complex the problem is to solve, the fewer people are able to solve it. As a result, those who can solve it can charge more money. Wealth comes from the value you can bring to others. Unlike time, value is easily scalable and isn't limited by the number of hours you have in a day. Take this YouTube video for example. I can produce this content once and it could generate me revenue for years into the future. I have videos that are years old that still makes me money to this day. Instead of asking yourself, what is a job you can work hard at that people will pay you for? Ask, what value can you provide that will solve a problem? How can you easily create one solution that will provide more value to more people? And creating educational content on YouTube is one of the best ways to do that. You can make a video and it can generate revenue for years to come, but you do have to be strategic about it. If you wanna learn the exact strategies I use to start and grow my educational YouTube channel and build multiple businesses around it, join my free Facebook group, Creator Business Accelerator, link below. If you continue to take the age old advice that you only need to work hard to become wealthy, you're only gonna be disappointed, frustrated, and break down. To climb the wealth ladder, stop hunting for ways to work longer hours, and instead start doing these four things. First, have a clear understanding of what value you bring to the table and be honest about it. Saying you work as a corporate concierge for a multinational food delivery conglomerate transporting products from producers to consumers when you're a DoorDash delivery driver 
doesn't cut it. No hate to any delivery drivers, they're some of the hardest working people I know, but again, this ties back to the value factor and being honest with yourself is the first step. If your skills aren't up to par, read some books or take some classes to gain more valuable skills. The more you invest in your knowledge and yourself, the more you're able to leverage to ask for more compensation. Abraham Lincoln said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax. The key to greater results is to work smarter, not harder. Next, focus on high impact tasks. Chances are you have a long running to-do list. Instead of trying to accomplish every single thing, focus on tasks that will have the greatest long-term impact. The things that are most critical to your job performance and the company's success. Next, look for ways to solve someone's problem. If you go out into the desert and you start digging holes, no one will give you money for that. But what if instead you convinced the company to pay you to dig holes to plant trees? Same solution, different outcome. In the US, the average human lives to be 79. If you work from 18 to 65, a typical nine to five, five days a week, you would have worked around 80,000 hours. If you sleep eight hours a day, each weekday, you would have slept 80,000 hours, which leaves 80,000 hours of free time during your work days. When you factor in the time that it takes to commute to work, the time to get Get ready, prepare a meal, pack lunch, make dinner, clean errands. This survey found that the average American had about four hours and 26 minutes of free time per working week, meaning the average American has less than an hour of free time a day, Monday to Friday. I'm not saying hard work isn't important. It is, but just working hard alone will not make you wealthy. And now that you understand that, the very next thing you need to do is click here to learn how we were all psychologically programmed from birth to be poor, and it's not your fault.